Larry Ogunjobi had one and a half sacks in the 2022 season. He gets no love. I am guessing that these two things are related. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates that I hope you'll check out. Larry O, as his teammates call him in the room, is beloved on a lot of levels. For one, he's the ultimate AFC North warrior, having already played for the Bengals and the Browns. All he's missing, obviously, from his trophy case is a season or so with the Ravens. He's respected, he's understood, and he's really, really appreciated, in particular, given the need of the defensive front line. My feeling is that Larry O should be in line for a healthy extension. My further feeling is that Larry O would welcome that, meaning right here in Pittsburgh. For one, as I just mentioned, and this is something he and I have talked about, he doesn't want to be moving around all the time. He doesn't want to be bouncing all over creation. He was looking after that whole big contract mishap last year with the Bears to find a place where he could prove himself, but ideally prove himself to stay. For anyone who doesn't know what I'm referencing, Larry O and the Bears agreed last summer on a three-year contract worth a total of $40.5 million. That included... $26.35 $26.35 million guaranteed. That is a big, big chunk of change for a defensive lineman. But the physical didn't go the way the Bears wanted. The contract was nullified. And it seemed like a lot of teams got cold feet and backed off. And before long, and it really didn't take long, Lario was over on the south side signing a contract with the Steelers. And no, he wasn't real big on the splash. There wasn't a whole lot going on there, but he was the interior force they needed to keep opposing offenses honest, meaning keep them off of Cam Hayward. And Larry O did a lot of that. Larry O made a lot of his own plays. Larry O was effective for the most part on run defending. And something else that might have been Most relevant to this specific discussion, he got better and stronger as the season went along. And you might be on the same wavelength as me if you're thinking about Larry O having had his best two or three games to actually close out the year. He and I talked about his late performance after his last game, and he agreed with me. He's not the type to do a whole lot of self-trumpeting, but he saw it the same way. He felt like he became more stable, more reliable, better uh, in tune with the defense, and he was able to go out there and make not only the plays that he usually makes, but also a little bit more in the way of splash. And then there's another thing to consider, and that is that Even if, and I'm fully expecting this, Mike Tallman and Omar Khan focus hard on the defensive line in the draft. Even if, I don't know, out of picks 17, 32, and 49, let's say, just for fun here, that two of the three end up being defensive linemen. What can you expect at Point Park University in downtown Pittsburgh? Respect Rigor, relevance, that's the Point Park pledge. You'll be treated with respect while being challenged and supported academically to graduate with career-ready, relevant skills. Visit pointpark.edu to learn more. I think you still need Larry O there. I really do. I don't think you can take um, a couple of rookies, maybe even throw DeMarvin Leal into it, although this would only be his second year and his first as a starter, presuming that he is a starter, and I don't know that he's ready to be a starter, and just say, hey, Cam, here's Romper Room. Teach them all how to do this. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's a, a winning approach 
toward the season that's right in front of you. Now, you can also say, hey, we'll go out and see what else is available on the open market. But do you really think that you're going to get a better deal than keeping the guy that you've got? And the guy that you've already learned to trust, and don't forget, that is a big, 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 big variable in football free agency, but especially for this team and this head coach. Don't forget how stung Tomlin always seems when something happens to the team as a result of somebody coming in from the outside. He'll make a point of bringing it up. This is why we prefer to have our own guys or to keep our own guys. Because we know what they're all about. He would say that after LeGarrette Blunt. He would say that after Melvin Ingram. And I was there for that press conference. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, nobody even really brought it up, coach. But that's, that's the extent to which they believe in that philosophy. Not out of some sort of stubbornness or being old-fashioned or whatever, but because they just don't know enough. And they can't know enough. They can ask a zillion questions. They can uh, sneak. They can probe behind the scenes and see what's there, information, rumors. But until you have that individual under your roof, you just don't know. And in a sport like football, where so much comes from the heart, so much comes from that energy and passion that you need to perform at a certain level, you're just not going to know that. Larry O was here. You know that. Larry O chose to return to the AFC North after having already had two experiences in the AFC North. Think about that alone and what that says to his character. He could have gone to some, I don't know, you know, NFC South team, whatever, that had a ton of cap room and, you know, plays meaningless football. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He came here. And I think he should stay here. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who've been hurt in car accidents, who need workers' comp, who need to file medical malpractice claims. The lawyers at LGKG have been designated super lawyers for over 15 years. That's a real thing that's reserved for the top 5% of attorneys across Pennsylvania. To learn more about them, J1Q comes from John, who says, Hey, DK, in all your years of covering the Steelers, have you ever witnessed a single position on the team so inept as inside linebacker has been for the past five years? It's frightening and so disappointing for me as a Steelers fan. John, I appreciate the sentiment. I appreciate the passion. I'm not going to agree with you on that position. It's been exasperating at times to watch the Steelers still half a decade later trying in vain to replace Ryan Shazier. But you've also had, you know, I, and I feel kind of bad about this because in yesterday's show, inside linebacker obviously came up and I describe it as a, you know, a long standing shortcoming. And it is. And I did mention Miles Jack parenthetically, but I probably didn't accentuate strongly enough. I think he's a pretty good player. And I think that might have gotten lost in the second half of this past season because he was dealing with a grade C tear of his groin, we found out after the season. And he wasn't himself. He didn't have the same push, didn't have the same jump, didn't have the same coverage. And yet, he kept going out there to play. They couldn't keep him off the field. This was a really vocal, emotional contributor to this defense, in addition to being a pretty good football player. So I don't want to roll Miles Jack under the same general bus that I'm driving whenever I talk about the inside linebacker position. I don't want to pay Jack the $14 million he's due next season, and I would hope that 
that Khan can figure out a way to either extend him or, you know, restructure or something that'll work better for cap purposes. But I would like for him to be on the team. And I could say the same at the risk of having to dodge bullets here for Robert Spillane. There are things that he brings to the team. He just shouldn't be starting. And he, oh my God, should not be your third down guy out there. So it, yeah, obviously it's not great. But what you asked me was about a positional hole over a sustained period. And I'm sorry, I can't get over the lack of corners this team had when it had an offense worthy of being a Super Bowl champion in the range of 2016, 2017, 2018. And heck, if you want to go back further in the Super Bowl against the Packers, the secondary had been a massive problem. And even when the Steelers attempted to address it in the draft, they came away with Artie Burns or other higher picks who would produce nothing. Senquez Golson as a second rounder never took a snap. Sean Davis, he had his moments as a rookie, but before long was on special teams. They would try to get guys from the outside. They would go for reclamation projects. Remember Justin Gilbert coming here. Uh, nothing worked until they brought Joe Hayden over from Cleveland. Nothing. Joe was the one who took that position and said, listen, we're just going to we're going to normalize things here again. You know, and Joe was outstanding, particularly early in his tenure for the Steelers. From there, they make the move. This isn't corner. This is safety, but it's a secondary to get Minka Fitzpatrick giving up a first round pick in midseason. Terrell Edmonds might not have provided the excitement everyone wants to see out of a secondary guy, but even as a first rounder, you'll take someone who's an every snap starter and who's as durable as he is and who's as tough as he is and who makes every tackle the way he does. But no, I'm not nearly cruel enough here, John, to start reading off the names of some of the guys the Steelers were using at corner over those years. But what hurt it the most was when it was happening. That team, that was uh, Ben Prime, a little bit past, but not much. It was AB Prime. It was Le'Veon Prime. They had everything going, except that they couldn't cover anybody and they couldn't control any opposing offense, particularly not that of the Patriots. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We'll be back with another one of these on Monday. 